On some level, Google Glass is a long time coming. In science fiction books and movies for decades, we've been imagining a world where we're not looking at our phones or tapping incessantly on keyboards. In the future, we've learned, we'd do everything with our voice, or maybe even our thoughts. Our computers, whatever they might look like, will project data into the world around us. We'll wave our arms like crazy to move information around, like Tom Cruise did a Minority Report. Or maybe we'd be like Tony Stark with a heads-up display permanently in front of our face while we order around our own personal Jarvis. Every author and director has a slightly different vision, but they've all bet on the same thing. Technology's not going to be on a screen anymore. It's going to be out in the world, on top of the world, inside the world, and we're going to be spending a lot of time poking it, prodding it, and especially talking to it. So far, Google Glass is a small, cautious, sort of imperfect step in that direction. It's designed to be used with your voice. You say, OK Glass, and then issue a command. Take a picture. Email my girlfriend. Show me who won the Yankee game. It's less like talking to a friend than it is issuing a series of dictates, but Glass obediently carries them out. Well, most of the time. Sometimes Glass goes to sleep, and you have to wake it by either tapping the side of your head like your Cyclops, or by tipping your head upward at the exact degree you'd use for a slightly exaggerated eye roll. And while Glass understands and executes its basic commands, navigation is a bit of a chore. You swipe along the temple of the glasses to move forward and backward through the endless glass interface. From the home screen, you can swipe through every interaction you've ever had with the device, or swipe to settings, or Google Now, or to other apps. Swiping upward takes you back, and tapping on the temples is like pressing enter. And that's all once you're connected to your phone, which you need before you can do much of anything. Glass can't connect to the internet on its own, so without your smartphone, it's really nothing more than an unimpressive camera glued to your face. Once you've signed into your Google account and linked it to your Glass, it uses a QR code and the camera in the Glass to connect, and it's probably the first time a QR code has ever been the simplest way to do anything. But the process is still far from over. Every contact you want to email or message, you'll have to manually add from your phone or computer. Every app you want to install, every place you want to share images, you just can't manage anything from Glass. Your smartphone is the engine, it's the power source. Glass is just an accessory attached to your face. Glass isn't anywhere near finished, and we'd know that even if Google hadn't said it over and over. Some of the gestures don't work reliably, and Glass doesn't understand me quite like I want it to. It's like being in a foreign country where no one fully understands English, and like the ugly American I am, I still find myself yelling, where is McDonald's, into the upper right corner of my eyeline more often than I should. Glass may come straight out of science fiction, but OK Glass doesn't begin quite the technological revelation that Star Trek's communicators or HAL 9000 taught us to hope for. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe Google followed HAL a little too closely. HAL, 